So, hello everyone. My name is Alan Shaw. Um, I'm a senior pursuing uh, dual degrees in mechanical and electrical engineering at Kettering University, which is located in Flint, Michigan, or home of the, the world's most marketed water system right now. So, um, that might be the most popular headline at the moment, but what's often overlooked is the amount of you know, initiatives that are occurring at Flint to try and improve it. So, I want to start off with a question. And, you know, what do you think of when you hear about lab experiment as a kid? So when I was a kid, this is what I thought of. Crazy explosions, all these things, and, and you know, these awesome things that we do in lab. So, but now being in college, I ask myself the same question. And this stack of papers looks a little bit more like a lab. And then this is probably what most students look like as they're preparing for a lab, trying to figure out every little thing. And then as soon as the lab opens, they sprint trying to get to the finish line before that lab closes and you never get access to it again. And so, you know, we all can utilize different methods to solve problems since we've had the time to practice, experiment, and explore. So let's take Legos as an example. It's a really colorful tool. But once you master that brick, you can, through enough exposure and time, you can create amazing things that are, you know, wildly imagined, like you, you couldn't possibly imagine when you look at the small brick. And this has a role as the same for labs. But for us, our labs have some incredible equipment that we can't put in our maker spaces. And thus, once we lose those lab access, our exploration time disappears. So what if I had the opportunity to really you know, just play this lab. And as a result, we came up with the Open Lab Days in initiative. And so days on campus where we would open labs up for everyone. And no assignments, complete freedom, stress-free, and plenty of support. And so as a result, you know, this idea, though it was backed by faculty and students at the time, it was risky. So therefore, no one wanted to fund it. But after working with the University Advancement and applying for grants, we finally got a GM Foundation to uh, help us support this project. And so our first two pilots were an open factory day and an open welding day. And the result, well, it was really bad because we had to turn people away. And we exceeded that dreadful sign that said max occupancy. And in addition, I had mechanical engineering and, electrical, uh, and industrial engineering department heads come to me afterwards and say that students were skipping class in order to go to my lab. So, whoops. But, um, but in addition, we had, you know, what does this tell us? The students who were trying so fast to get through those labs were now trying to skip classes to come back to the lab. And, you know, even the community attended, and we realized that it was just, the, it had to do with the results. You know, teaching and learning occurred everywhere. And students became teachers, and, you know, and as a result, so much learning occurred. And so as a result, you know, starting next term, we're going to try and move this initiative and try and expand it to different labs. Um, as an example, we also tried to do an open machine shop there, where we're going to try to certify students so that they can operate the machine tools and use it. Um, so, as a result, you know what this demonstrated to me were the opportunities we have of using unutilized labs uh, to fulfill a new role. We can champion a, think a tinkering mindset helping students understand concepts, and in turn, helping them unleash their creativity. So, as a result, I'd like to end with the question, you know, I'd like to, how might, how might we create greater access to labs across the higher education?